everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, more work on the tail feathers. Yeah, that's going to take me a while to get through as it takes up a lot of this uh, pass. Well, a lot of the whole picture. It's kind of the focal point. So, yeah, we're still working on that. Today, I'm going to be working on a section that is right at the bottom of the pass. And then if we finish that, I will move up to uh, some more feathers up higher. Yeah, like I said, because of the way I'm stitching, I'm ending up with a lot of interesting shapes <laughs> to my work here. So. Yeah, so it's wild right now. Eastern Canada is under a big heat wave, heat dome they call it, but here it is still cool enough that you can probably hear my furnace is running <laughs> in the background. And uh, yeah, we still need jackets and sweaters and things, so. Ugh. Yeah, it's been raining a lot, and but like I've said before, if that helps keep us from having really bad fire season this year, then I am okay with it. And it's not enough that it's causing flooding, so. We've been fortunate. Oh, come on, stop doing that. Oh my goodness. Okay, this happens sometimes. I'm gonna close up Pattern Keeper and re-initialize it. Let's see if that fixes anything, yeah. It's just weird sometimes it does that. There, yeah, the top menu keeps popping open when I don't mean it to. Usually, when I do this, I'm just checking it's still recording because that would suck if it had messed that up. <laughs> but yeah, usually when it does that, restarting it helps. Yeah, not much new. <laughs> Today. Same old. I don't complain though. The one time I uh, thought to myself, man, my life's kind of boring. I had a cancer scare. So, <laughs> yeah. My boring is good. I like my routine. Yeah. Yes, yeah, somebody said once, you know, it's hard to tell whether I'm in my groove or stuck in a rut. And I'm like, I don't mind my rut. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I am a creature of habit. Yeah, there was a group on Facebook I was in and someone was saying, you know, do you like surprises, like surprise parties and stuff? And I said, yeah, I'm one of those, I don't mind a surprise if it's a little thing. Like, oh, you went to the store and you bought me a chocolate bar. Thank you, you know? But yeah, if it's suddenly like out of the blue, let's go away this weekend, like on Friday or something. Yeah, I, I don't do well with that. <laughs> I mean, I can go with that spontaneous kind of thing, but generally that's not my thing because, yeah, I have plans and I don't like having them interrupted. Or like I said, I prefer if my husband will say, oh, let's go out to dinner on Friday when it's like Wednesday or something. But if he says it like the day of, it's like, well, Often I have leftovers or I have food defrosted that I plan to cook that night and now you've just messed up my whole plan, right? <laughs> yeah, so. Mm -mm. A little knot on there, but it's staying on the back, so we're good. Actually, I was going to park that here, but these are pretty short, so I think I'm actually going to park this down here and do these sort of three stitches that are by themselves there. Yeah. And use a different thread for up here because there's going to be more of them together. So yeah, there's not a lot of colors in this 
area here. So we'll see what we get done. And like I said, I may shift up and work on some more feathers that are up higher on the page. We will see. Oh, pardon me. Oh, yeah, so I have this where I occasionally snore and wake myself up. Not very often, but sometimes. So I tried buying this anti-snoring mouth guard thing. And uh, yeah, it was so uncomfortable that it's like, well, it keeps you from snoring because you can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it had a lot of good reviews and a lot of people liked it, but yeah. And they say, oh, it takes time to get used to it, but oh, it was, yeah, I'm not sure I could persevere with that. So I guess I'll just live with it. I have these nasal dilator things that go in my nose and that helps keep me from snoring most of the time, so good enough. Maybe I need a CPAP machine at some point, but <laughs> I'm cheap, so. Okay, let's see. These are... Oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> I actually had another thread pinched there between my finger and thumb, so that's why I couldn't seem to pull them apart. Yeah, so a lot of times in the summer we would go and visit family in BC, but we were there not too long ago because uh, my mother-in-law was terminal and we obviously wanted to go say goodbye to her in person so yeah we already did our trip then, then so yeah I said, this year the plan is to is to do some reno work on the house that's been needing to be done for a while yeah we have carpet in our bedrooms that extends out into the hallway and where all the seams of the carpet are, are now wearing apart. Yeah. Had my vacuum cleaner caught part of it and actually pulled it out like a, a run in a stocking. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that carpet was old when we moved in. In 2006. So, yeah. I don't know if it's original to the house. Because the house is like, 50 years old. I don't think it's quite that old, but it is, it is, uh, yeah, old. <laughs> so yeah, it was fairly worn when we moved in, so. <laughs> yeah, because I said when we had to replace our bathtub, I think it was either last year or the year before. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was original to the house because it couldn't fit through the door. So I was pretty sure they brought it up and built around it. And yeah. Getting the old one out wasn't too bad, just broke it, but you obviously don't want to break the new one. And yeah, my husband had to take the door frame off and it was a whole, whole ordeal. <laughs> I was worried we were gonna have to actually cut and uh, widened the door, but thankfully, no. We did manage to get it in there. Kind of like I said, we have a big overstuffed couch in our rec room, and my husband didn't think about the fact of how big it is because um, you can't take the cushions off it. You can take the cushions that you sit on off of it, but the cushions on the back, they don't come off. And they're very, very overstuffed. And yeah, we barely got that one through the door. Uh, again, I was worried we were going to have to cut a hole in the wall. And it wasn't just the, the size of the door, but the way that the couch had to sort of go around a corner. 
and we had to pad the opposite wall with like a piece of spare carpet so that it could slide along there and yeah I was worried we were gonna put a hole in the drywall and we didn't but we said yeah if we ever sell this house and move that couch is coming with it <laughs> if they don't like it they can deal with uh taking it out which you mean you might have to cut it out who knows yeah that was um a house my parents bought when I was in high school one of the rooms came with it. oh kiddo forgot something so <laughs> to come back and get it anyway uh oh yeah so i was saying that um yeah this house my parents bought it came with a table because <laughs> the lady said yeah i tried to get it out of there i ended up banging up the walls and having to repaint it so it's yours now i think somebody had like built it in that room so yeah yeah we forget about that kind of stuff sometimes there was one where neighbor he, um, he modified his truck to lift it and uh, he did it inside his garage and then didn't think about the fact that now the truck was too high to go out of the garage. Because <laughs> uh, the door didn't go up that high. Like, whoops. Oh, sucks to be you. <clears throat> yeah, he ended up lowering it back down, moving the truck out into the driveway and then raising it again because... It was either that or uh, cut apart his garage, which he obviously didn't want to do that either. So but yeah, whoops. Gonna just kind of work out to here and the color kind of curves back that way so I'll make my break there and then like I said once this is all filled in I'm gonna move up a bit So sometimes I end up working downwards, sometimes I end up working more side to side. But yeah, saying it's not hot. I actually was freezing the other day and I had to pull out my um my electric blanket from my closet. Yeah. Which is just wild. But yeah. I could not seem to warm up. It was just one of those my feet were icy cold and when that happens, the rest of me is cold. I was wearing slippers. I always do, but yeah. I don't know. Some days it's just like that. Oh, I almost crossed two squares at once. That would not be good. I did that once and I didn't notice till after I tied off the thread and stitched a whole bunch more around it and then oh my goodness that was a nightmare to undo yeah i had to clip it and then rip back enough from both directions until there was enough to secure it and then restitch it and yeah that was not fun i was not happy i considered leaving it but i'm too much of a perfectionist to do that so <laughs> it would have been all i could see forever on that piece so yeah
yeah, closing in on 43%, which may or may not happen this month because I think I have two more sessions after this one. So, yeah, we will see. Yeah, so it looks like Kiddo might get to be his dad's assistant again during the summer part-time, which will be nice. Yeah, he spent pretty much all his money on his computer setup, so yeah. He wants to get, um, he likes to play um, BeamMG Drive, which is like an open world driving game and stuff, because yeah, he likes his vehicles, so. Uh, and he wants to get a steering wheel setup that has like feedback haptics and stuff and a shifter but yeah they're not cheap so gotta save up for that again <laughs> okay. that'll be close but i might be able to get those stitches with that little bit that's left. We will see. Still working on the blanket for my father-in-law. Not planning it by a deadline, so yeah. Just sort of do a bit every day and it'll be done when it is done. Yeah, I think if I'm lucky, I will be able to get the last three that strand. Cool. Okay, that's a different color. <laughs> yeah, not the one I have parked there. Yeah, a lot of this color here, but it's not in an entirely solid block, so I'll have to slow things down a little bit. Because, yeah, I can see the star symbols completely closed in there, so I'm not going to do that. As per my usual. Okay, 
that is no good. There we go. Yeah, when you do the loop start from the front, you can feel when the loop pops to the back. And I did not feel that, so I knew that something wasn't right <laughs> even before I looked at it. Another green here, yep. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Mm. There we go. Fibers were just fuzzy enough that I didn't want to thread as smoothly. Still, they're splitting, which we don't want. was a snarl there but there wasn't okay just double checking So here's my cutoff line right here. Oh, pardon me.
Yeah, luckily the pollen seems to have calmed down out there. It was pretty bad at the beginning of June. Went for my walk and there was like yellow and all the cracks and stuff in the pavement. And at first I thought maybe it was paint, but no, it was all pollen. Like, yuck. <laughs> I'm fortunate that I'm not that sensitive to it, but yeah, my husband, he suffers from that. I had one year it was really bad for me and then, yeah, sort of not really since. Yeah, it was weird. It was like the first year we moved out to Alberta, the mosquitoes, yeah, the bites I got, they swelled up to like the size of plums. It was awful. I had to ice pack them to keep myself from scratching them. <laughs> And then after that, I was fine. I think it was probably because we had just moved and they were a different species of mosquito that like I wasn't used to or something. At least that's my theory. And then after that, I was used to it. But yeah, that was not fun. Mosquitoes tend to leave me alone. They're not too bad. My sister and I, we would share a room and there were a lot of times I'd get one mosquito bite and she'd wake up with like five of them. So yeah. I don't know why, but they seem to like her more. Also get those three out of this, so might as well before I tie it off. Oops, that's not right. Came up a little bit short there. better. And poking up through here. That part got filled in a little quicker than I thought it might. Well, 
because like I said, there's not too many colors here, so. So I think I'll just actually cut it off right here at this grid line for now. Just take a little, or I might extend it a little further. I'll decide as I stitch. <laughs> as I generally do. I think I even have this threaded, so yeah, I might as well. I'll do this bit and sort of curve it back towards the left. colors kind of change here again for a different feather. I'll do that later. But I'm gonna go back up and sort of work my way down that slope there, so.
think I'm gonna have to start new threads pretty soon. Let's see what I have here. But that's not very long. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is fill that in first. my needle the wrong way around. That will not work too well. Yeah, pretty sure that's only going to be long enough for that row there. squeaky brakes again. I always know when he's leaving because yeah, his truck has squealy brakes. Yeah, when we were first dating, my husband's vehicle had that, so we joked it was a bad come-in-after-curfew vehicle. <laughs> Although, I didn't really have much of one at that point. Yeah. I was still living with my parents and paying the rent because couldn't afford to get a place by myself. And yeah, I had my own key as long as I wasn't coming in super late and making a ton of noise. It was fine, so. It was funny too because that was a Isuzu Trooper he had and he owned oh sheesh how many since then I'm trying to think he's owned like three of them that was the only one that had squeaky brakes so yeah I don't know what it was with that yeah because he had that one and we sold it before we left BC and then he had another one that he eventually sold to his dad that was the one he took off-roading and then uh, we had the one that our son was driving when he got his license, which was the right-hand drive because it was from Japan. Yeah, so I'm not sure if there was one other we owned. I know we owned one white one. We might have owned two at different times. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. It's been a while. But yeah, but like I said, we have, we've had at least three and only one of them had those squeaky brakes, so... Yeah, that one that we sold, that our son was driving. And we saw someone driving it around town for a couple of weeks, but now it's gone. So we think they probably took it to one of the auctions in the big cities. Yeah. Yeah, I said I kind of missed that. That vehicle was, it was a fun little one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think we had it for, yeah, something like close to 10 years. Yeah, something like that. It was funny, too, because like we said, with the right-hand drive, it, uh, it caused a lot of double takes because uh, our son would sit in front, and he was like, you know, seven at the time. And so, yeah, you know, people, oh, my gosh, is that kid driving? And then, oh, no. But, yeah, like we said, it was a diesel, so... Out here, when it gets really cold, it's not practical because once it goes below a certain temperature, you can't start it. And, uh, yeah, it gets 
darn cold here in the winter. Plus, it didn't have airbags as well, so, you know, yeah, we wanted to get him something that's a little safer as well. Yeah, and it was one of those, like, we wouldn't be able to sign it over to him because it's a right-hand drive and he's a new driver. So, yeah, he was able to drive it as a secondary driver, but not, he wouldn't be able to have, we couldn't sign the title over to him until he'd been driving for, oh, gee, I think it was like five years or something. So, yeah, like we said, he graduates high school next year. So. That's the plan, is after he graduates and he's 18, we'll sign that vehicle over to him, the Jeep that we bought. It will be his. Yeah, insurance is so expensive as a new driver. It's kind of nice because he did take um, the driver's ed training course at school. And so because of that, he got, it to, he got to start at the year three rate instead of the year one, which is higher. And then he stays at the year three rate for three years and then yeah when he reaches year four it starts to drop but yeah so it won't drop anymore for another couple of years yeah we told our kid when he took his road test like don't be disappointed if you don't pass the first time because a lot of people don't but he did yeah because yeah my husband he didn't pass and he was taking his test on a manual and the guy said that you you took your hand off the wheel and he's like well how am i supposed to shift with like my foot or something <laughs> yeah so yeah he's like i probably shouldn't have been a smart aleck because if there was a chance he would have passed me well he certainly wasn't gonna then so <laughs> that he said yeah when he went to retake it a few months later he got the same guy and the guy said, well, you passed, but just barely. And my husband's like, pass is a pass. I'm happy. So, yeah. But yeah, kid all passed it the first try. So that was exciting. Yeah, we were going to do it during spring break. But then uh, my vehicle, it was my vehicle he was using to take the test on, uh, had a cracked windshield. And you apparently aren't allowed to take a test on that because, yeah, it's considered, like, an impairment to your vision. So it's a safety thing. Oh, darn. This thing. I was trying to smooth it out and remove a knot, but instead I tied the knot in there. So, oh, well. It happens. Yeah, and out here in Alberta, I mean... It's hard to not get cracks in your windshield. We get so many big rigs throwing up big rocks that, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> we didn't have a bad a time of it in BC. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's a prairie or something, but yeah. And they sand our roads too in the winter. So sometimes there's a little bit bigger pieces of gravel and then yeah. If another vehicle's wheels throws it into your windshield, it can break, so. Yeah, they're out cleaning, running the street cleaners. Yeah, driving by those sucks because there's so much dust in the air as they're cleaning it. And yeah, and there's always somebody who parks on the street even though you're not supposed to while they're cleaning and then that part doesn't get cleaned and yeah. They don't give tickets here for that, but yeah. Man, I saw one though. They did that for snow removal and the snow was like a couple of feet high and people parked, left their cars on the street and they plowed right by it. And so, yeah, their cars were stuck up on an island. It's like, now what are you going to do? You can't drive off there. You'd wreck your vehicle. Oh, 
to wait till the thaw. Like, yikes. Yeah, when they say don't park on the street, better listen. Mm. But yeah, I remember there was one time they came around the day before and had, you know, don't park on the street. We're going to be clearing the snow. And we didn't. And then they never got to our street. And then the next day they came by and I had to go to a doctor's appointment and they had, they had scraped up all the ice. And so my, my, um, driveway was blocked. And so there was a guy with a backhoe who was cutting out the driveways and I kind of waved at him and asked, can you do mine next? I got to go. And he was kind of all annoyed at me. And it was like, well, if you guys had cleaned the street yesterday, like you said you were going to when I didn't have to go anywhere, I wouldn't be bugging you. Right. But it's like, you guys were late and I need to get out of my driveway. So sorry, but I wasn't mean about it. I just asked him if he could do mine next because I got to go. Yeah. And so they did. But yeah, it's like, could you do it without the attitude? That'd be appreciated. <laughs> I didn't give you attitude. So if you wouldn't give me attitude back, that'd be great. Yeah, they don't even clean our street every year. A lot of times they, uh, or if they do, it's right before the thaw, if there was a lot of snow because they don't want things to flood. If it's, uh, yeah, too much for the rain gutters to handle. But yeah, they had one year, they had to access the manholes and rather than plow the whole street, they brought in a backhoe and like cut sections out of it. And then, yeah, that was real fun. I said, it was like having speed bumps all down the street. <laughs> oh, made you feel motion sick driving over it. Oh. I mean, I guess it must have been cheaper than clearing the whole thing entirely. But yeah, I wasn't thrilled about it. There we go.
Oh my goodness. Oh, I tell ya. I am not having luck today. <laughs> Snarls and knots. Just not behaving. Yeah, so I've been watching, um, there was a crime show called Big Sky. It was on for a few years, and, um, Jensen Ackles, who played Dean on, um, on, uh, Supernatural, is in it as the sheriff. And so they've been putting, um, little, sprinkling little Supernatural references throughout there, which has been funny. There's one where classic cars are getting stolen, and he, he says, oh, you know, uh, a guy wouldn't have his baby uncovered, and it's because he called, yeah, the Impala baby in, um, and then, uh, somebody moves into a new place, and he brings a loaf of bread and says, so you don't go hungry, and then he pulls out salt, and instead of, like, you know, how they had an It's a Wonderful Life, so the life always has flavor, he pulls out the salt, and he says, and this is for, uh, protection. <laughs> yeah, which was funny. Um... Well, it's his most known role, so how could you not, right? Yeah. Yeah, he actually tried out for the lead in Smallville, and he didn't get it. And uh, they gave him a recurring character for a while. But then I was thinking, well, I guess it turned out good for him, because soon after that, he started Supernatural, and that ended up being an even bigger show than Smallville, so... Although I enjoyed that show too. Yes, yeah, someone was saying they have to do an adaptation where he gets to play Batman now because there's a famous one in Supernatural and he says, I'm Batman. So <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty fun. Somebody's coming in again. That was my husband. <laughs> Needed some paperwork. Yeah, I thought I was supposed to be undisturbed this uh, this morning to film, but <laughs> it's like Grand Central in here. Ooh. I don't know if he even knows I was filming or not. <laughs> yeah. Even when I tell him, he forgets sometimes, so. Ooh. Just edit him out later. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna pin this here, but then I'm gonna also park it. There we go. So that's ready for the next pass across. So yeah, we are getting close to having this little section filled in. And I think that actually may be where I will call it a day.
was almost all greens today. Almost 200 stitches, too, to fill in this area, so yeah. I figured it would take me about an hour. Nope, she felt like maybe it was snagged, but it wasn't. Sometimes, rather than ducking my head under the work, I just pull it back and feel if it goes smoothly, then I know it's not snagged. not the right spot. It should be one more there. Stitch below the grid line. There we go. Okay. Ooh. My goodness, pardon me. I'm actually not that tired. I just yawn a lot. <laughs> Oh yeah, or there was one I was saying where on the Big Sky show, somebody put on a werewolf mask so they couldn't be recognized by the cameras. And yeah, he says, oh, werewolf, that's a first for me, <laughs> which is funny because like, yeah, Supernatural, they dealt with quite a few werewolves. <laughs> so yeah, my husband keeps hearing me going, ah, <laughs> whenever one of those little Easter eggs happens, yeah. Yeah, apparently he's signed on to do another series. I think it's with Prime, if he's also going to be playing law enforcement, so. I don't currently have a Prime subscription, but it will go on my list. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm cheap and I don't, I won't pay for more than one streaming service at a time, so. It's wild, though. We went with, um, we have the Disney Plus, but... We chose the option with ads because that way we don't have to pay as much per month. But I tell you, they have more ads than the Tubi, which is entirely free with ads. It's like, yeah, you guys are greedy. <laughs> and it's not terrible. It's not as much ads as watching something, you know, on cable, but yeah. Well, that's why I don't put mid-roll ads on my videos because I know how freaking annoying that is. And they do say that, oh, they put them at natural break points, but I've watched videos where they cuts off people mid-word, you know, mid-sentence. So, yeah, so much for that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, starting to get into 
different colors here as uh, the feather changes pattern again. Do a couple more stitches and then we'll take a break. Might as well stitch to 200 again, hey? Maybe just past it. I like to stop on those round numbers when I can, but it doesn't always work out that way, of course. I had one time, though, I was going to quit, and, uh, yeah, I had, like, 66,664, and I was going to quit, and then I was like, oh, no, I should do two more stitches so it can be all sixes, because that's just kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, my husband said, you know, you want to go watch TV? It's like, no, wait, I have to do two more stitches because of the number. He's like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, he understands. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I was talking about, like, um, on the stereo, I always want it to be an even number, unless it's a multiple of five. Like, 15 is okay, but, like, 13 is not. And, uh, yeah, my son does the same thing. My husband says, well, I just don't look at the what the, the dial says, so that way... It doesn't matter if it's on an odd number. I won't know it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was funny. Okay. So, yeah, again, as you can see, it's changing colors into a new motif there. Okay, two more. So, let's see. So that will bring you to exactly 200 even. Cool. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here next time. Thanks, everyone.